so hey girl hey hey girl hey hey girl hey welcome back to my channel guys and welcome back to another video if this is your first time here welcome my love please stick around don't be a stranger and do consider subscribing if this is not your first time here honey listen i see you watching me watching you watch me baby so you better be subscribed honey stop being a creeper go ahead come on in the family and subscribe girl because i see you coming here over and over and over again you already know the vibes that's why you keep coming back so guys happy 2024 guys today is january 1st 2024 can you guys believe we have made it to another year oh my gosh we've made it to another year guys so we are blessed to be able to see this year and i told you guys starting really in january my plan was to give you guys you know videos in this series on how i survived a marriage scam if this is your first time here just let me give you a little little introduction to me and who i am you're going to have to go back and watch the video you know the videos in these in this series i'm gonna link it in the card above somewhere throughout this video and i'm also put it in this description um of this video so you can go ahead and watch all the videos in this series so you can catch up but i'm iffy constance guys and i survived the marriage scam i brought my ex here from nigeria i mean guys you all hear the stories so much yes it happens yes it happened to me i survived the marriage scam you know i'm a true believer of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger i'm still here and i'm just telling my story i'm just talking about it i'm adding you know a lot of support and you know you know just that support and just a lot of references and everything to people like me who have gone through the same thing and let me say this to you haters let me go ahead and say this to you haters because i get quite a bit of messages on my videos from haters um and i can tell that um they are people that are probably connected to you know him or people who you know like friends families whatever could be people who females who are dealing with him now whatever i don't care because i can tell by the things that they're saying but honey you're wasting your time none of your negative comments are even seen on my channel by any of my subscribers this is a safe place for people so if you are wasting your time creating these fake pages just to comment on my videos you're wasting your time because if you go to your real page and look for your comment it's not there no one can see your fake negative comments but you on your fake pages that you create myself and my administrators we go through and we block your little fake channels and we block your little fake comments and the only person that can see those comments are you we can't even see them after we block them so you could comment a million times you will never get a response because no one sees it but you but thank you for the comment because it definitely helps the analytics of the channel so thank you you know why don't you be yourself and be an adult and comment from your real page and let's have a conversation but i just want to put that out there so if you know you want to comment on a video or you need advice or you know you know just 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 want to vent or just talk about things you know under my videos you can you don't have to worry about trolls and all that fakeness jumping down your back because as soon as it's seen it's going to be taken care of and you'll never see another comment from them again i know you guys know that um because i may leave one or two little troll comments on certain videos but not many you know not many at all they are immediately within the hour most of the time when i you know make these videos public um 
you know, all the little trolls, they usually comment within the first, you know, two to three hours. They go create their little fake pages, then they comment. Um, and we take care of those right then. So, child, stop wasting time creating these fake pages. No one is going to see your comment, but you, no one cares. <laughs> so, now that that's out the way. So, guys, this video is going to be, I think it's going to be, the third video discussing, hold on, hold on, let me tell you guys, let me see what I told you guys I was going to discuss next because I know I did um, in the midst of my vlogmas or what I call vlogmas, I did a healing part two. This video is going to be a healing part three and in this video guys, this video is going to be really different because in this video, um, I'm gonna discuss us and I don't I don't I don't call myself a victim I'm not gonna call you a victim you survived it you are a survivor you're not a victim so I'm going to be discussing us and the roles the role we played in what happened to us no we cannot you know change the fact of who we married and what their intentions from with us from the beginning but there are several things that we did ourselves that we could have done differently to save ourselves from this entire situation so I'm gonna discuss that in this video so um one of the first things that I'm going to hit on guys is because I hear so many people always say um, a breakup is a breakup. Um, you have broken up, you know, with, you know, people that you have been with men and women because this happened to men and women. So you have broke up with, you know, someone that you've been with from the United States. A breakup is a breakup. Baby is totally different. Let me discuss me. When I was with my oldest kid's father, we got together. We were undergrads in university, in college. Um, we got together. We were young, straight out of high school, young and dumb, getting together, making babies. That's pretty much what we did. When we broke up guys it was totally different because although we weren't together when we got together there was not any malicious intent there you know we didn't get together you know with one of us planning on scamming or hurting or deceiving the other so when we decided that we were no longer going to be together there was no ill will because there were no ill intent with us you know so he didn't do things to try to hurt me and to hurt my children you know even when we weren't together if i needed something i could call him and if he had it he would give it to me he still came and saw the kids, spent time with the kids. Like I said, if I needed something and he had it, he would get it to me. If he didn't have it, he would go get it. We didn't, you know, he didn't come into this relationship wanting or needing anything from me. So he didn't do anything trying to hurt me afterwards. He didn't try to dig a hole for me. He didn't try to kill me when it came to my finances and my well-being and my mental health. He didn't do those type of things. When you're dealing with somebody from a culture that hates you because of your culture, that treatment is going to be different. The things that they say and do to you is going to be different. The treatment from the dude that I decided to marry and bring here from Nigeria, it was totally different than any ex that I have ever had from the U.S. He was, he was, he's the only person that I've ever, you know, been with that wasn't born and raised in the U.S. I've never had anyone 
to try to hurt me the way he did intentionally. So it's different, guys. The treatment is different. The hatred that they have is different. Even, like, well, not now because I have no contact with him now. There is no way for him to even contact me. He doesn't even have my phone number um, because I changed everything. But there is, like, you know, when, we, when I would have conversations with him when the situation occurred, with my old home or even before then when I would have to speak to him about anything like the hatred in his voice it was just you can hear it you can feel it that's why I said I never want to be around him on purpose the energy is felt it's a lot so if you you know, when you're saying things like you had a breakup from someone from the U.S. and all of this stuff, it is totally different. It is totally different. Totally different treatment. Totally different energy. The intent is totally, totally, totally different. Totally different. I've never in my life had someone try to hurt me and take everything from me and break me down the way that he did when the only thing I've ever done for him was help him and his family even though that's not the narrative that was put out there about me it was other stuff but anyway so that's the first thing I wanted to say like the second thing that you know one of the other things that I really wanted to get into guys is um, those red flags we ignore so many things going into the relationship we ignore so many things going into it um there were so many lies that even before you know me and him met and i was just talking to him you know through chat and through video calls on whatsapp and all of that stuff there were so many lies that I overlook that I know that someone who's watching this video who could be going through the same thing now I know you're overlooking them because you're so intrigued with the different culture and it's kind of difficult for you to believe that you're being used and that you're being lied to I'm sorry guys my ice maker is on so is my dishwasher so is my washer and dryer so those are the ones you're hearing um so you overlook so many things and even when you are talking to and dealing with their friends and family members where they are everyone is so nice and so accepting and it's just like everything is perfect you are overlooking so many things and so many red flags your brain is telling you that you been that you're being lied to but you're overlooking it. So you're setting yourself up to be hurt, to be used, to be scammed, you know? When you're in the beginning stages of that, those of you who are looking at this video now, and you're in those beginning stages, and you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. You're setting yourself up for it. Stop it. Stop it. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it at the head and stop it. They're telling you they love you within the first week. Never met you. Never touched your skin. Never smelled your scent. Have done nothing but heard your voice and seen you on a video call. What could they possibly love about you? There is no history there. It's not like there's someone that you've known for 15, 20 years that you have history with. There is nothing there. There can be no type of intimacy or nothing there. And when I say that, I don't mean just sex, but there can be no really connection because you haven't been together yet to build that connection. So stop it. You don't need to go and travel to that country and see them and get married on the first trip. Don't do that. If you're saying this is something you want to go into, go visit them a few times. 
three, four, five times. If you can afford to, stay two to three weeks. Get to know them and their personalities. You need to see them in pretty much every emotion. You need to see them when they're upset to see if they're just as selfish as they can be and only care about themselves. You need to see them when they're happy. If they drink, you need to see how they behave when they're drunk. Get to know them. Get to know their friends. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. If they really love you the way they say they do, and that's how, and they want you, and they want them, there is no rush for you to run and get married straight then and then start petitioning for them to come here. If they're not just looking for a ticket out of their country, get to know them. Get to know them. Even if they are saying they don't want to leave their country and they want to get married and they want you to move there, go visit. Learn about their culture. You don't have to marry them when you first go there. Go go visit. Learn about their culture. Ask those hard questions. What do their finances look like? If you live there, what can they provide for you? What would your life look like? Would you have to bring all of your income and then if you did that will there still be a marriage after that you know would you end up bringing all of your money there and they dump you and leave you for someone else and you have to go back to your home country broke and starting over use your common sense those red flags are there take your time there is no need to rush. When I went into my situation um, with him, first of all, I was not in the best place in my life. I can't say that um, because it, just 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 let me say this because I know sometimes when people see plus size women. You know, especially when we are women of color, there's so many, there, there's so many stigmas that go along with that. You know, so much negativity that goes along with that. Uh, not from us, from society, from other cultures. And they just expect us to have the lowest self-esteem. And I'm gonna just tell you, the when I met my ex, I was at one of my lowest points. However, Let's just be clear. Those of you who know me personally and who have known me for years throughout high school, throughout my college years, you know, when I graduated college, everything, I've always been her. Even when I was plus size, I never had an issue with men. Never. I never had an issue with men. Even when I was at my lowest, I never had an issue. And it wasn't just, you know, oh, he just want to get with you and fuck and blah, 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 blah. No, baby. No, baby. I've always been her. Even at my heaviest. Even when I was depressed and, and putting that fake smile on, I've always been her. So... You know, and if you know me, you know it's nothing but truth. I've always been her. I've always attracted and dated and been around men who, if I wanted to, I would be taken care of. If I say this is what I want, they would go do this for me. Even now, I'm still her. I'm still her. I'm still her. I could pick up my phone and call a few people right now that I don't even deal with anymore because y'all know with my baby and I'm never, I'm never going to hurt him and do him like that because I know he would never do me like that. But I have a few that I could pick up my phone and now and call, I need you to do this for me. I get told I'll be there within the hour or I'm a zero you or I'm a cash at you. It doesn't matter. I've always been hurt. I've always been hurt. And, but, however, sometimes when you're at those lower points in your life, you ignore who you are and what you know you deserve for something else. And that's what I did. Because if I was me 100%, 
when I met my ex, I never would have gave him a second look. I never would have gave him the first look. I'm just being honest. I never would have gave him the first look. You know, and it has nothing to do with him being from another country because I love all people. I love all people. However, I never would have put myself in a situation to play build a man and that's what I did because I brought someone here who had absolutely nothing and gave them all of me plus I built a man although things are said differently but I built a man I built a man who tried to kill me in every sense financial, physical, mentally, everything, everything. But that's what you deal with when you're dealing with another culture who at the end of the day hates your culture. So honey, I'm telling you guys, pay attention to those red flags and don't ignore them because you're hurting yourself. You can control that. You can say, I know this is bullshit. I just met them. Let me block this motherfucker everywhere and move on. You can say that, but you're still choosing to stay there and stick to it. You're still choosing to stay there and stick to it before you even get yourself locked in. Before you even get locked in. I had, I call her a friend now because we met by her watching my videos. She ignored so many red flags. Went to Nigeria, got married, came back here. And she really, when she went and got married, you know, things was in the back of her mind. And the thing is, she knew she shouldn't have because she knew she was being played. But she got back here. She never filed anything for him. She did everything she needed to do, you know, to divorce him so he could come here, you know, you know, riding her back, you know. But um, I talked to her and the many red flags that she ignored because girl, we ignore so many y'all. You know, we ignore so many and I'm so grateful to her because she had enough sense to stop it before he got here and ruined her life or ruined years of her life. Because when we go down that road with them and they're here and they do all they can to break us down, okay, it happened. But you are responsible for your own life. If you stay down in the dumps and depressed and in the dirt, you're staying down because you choose to. You're staying down because you choose to. And you're giving that sucker so much power over your life that they shouldn't have. You've already given them enough. So you're going to give them the power over your life for the rest of your life as well? Come on, boo. Make that shit make sense. You can't. You have to get up, take your life back, stop making excuses. Yes, it happened. Yes, it hurt. Fuck that shit. Move the hell on. Rebuild your life. Rebuild your life. The type of woman I am, I refuse to allow someone to have that much power over me that I'm afraid to love again. I'm afraid to get up and try. I'm afraid to live my life. I'm afraid to go wherever I need to go and do X, Y, and Z. I'm not going to give that motherfucker that much power over me. I gave enough when I was in the relationship. Because if you're in the relationship, let's keep it honest and be 100. You know nothing was about you. They're very selfish. Everything was always about them. Never gave a fuck about you, how you was feeling, what their actions did, what it caused you to feel emotionally, what it caused you to go through financially. As long as they got everything they wanted and they needed, that's all they cared about. They never gave a damn about you. People on the outside, Looking in, couldn't see that 
because they made it seem like it was something else. People on the outside looking in, you know, they think that, you know, you're married to this great person and they're supporting you and all of these things, but it's not. You know it's not. You know it was never about you. Not one situation was about you. They didn't give it to him. As long as they got what they needed, they're pulling, 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 taking, 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 and didn't give a damn. And you're still there, like a fool, dealing with it, making excuses, going through it. Girl, get your ass up. When you gonna get your ass up, girl? When you gonna get your ass up? Stop making excuses, baby. We can't make excuses anymore. I told you guys, these next videos, how they're going to come, we're focusing on us and getting us together. And you have to start with acknowledging what you did, what you did wrong, and how the fuck you move on from that. And you can't keep worrying about and dwelling on what they did to you. The shit happened. It happened. Let karma get their asses. Who gives a damn? Who gives a damn if it's tomorrow, if it's five years from now? It'll catch up with them. No one gives a damn. I know for sure I'm a good person. I know for damn sure I was a great wife. I would never question who I was as a wife. I was just a great wife to the wrong motherfucker. But I know I was a great wife. I did everything I was supposed to do as a wife for that person. Everything. I had to sit back and think about things and, and, and realize some stuff. You know, me making excuses. You know, me putting myself in situations. Me doing shit that hurt my children. And at the end of the day, that's who was most important. That's who it was about. That's why now, you know, even if it's something that I may not want to hear, but we're breaking these generational curses, right? We're breaking these generational changes, right? Change, right? So if there's anything that my children feel they need to tell me, they know the doors are open. They can tell me anything about anyone, and it is what it is. About my honey now, they love him. Cam Cam met him when I was an undergrad because that's how long I knew but Cam remembers him you know but and him and Cam had their little private conversations like and Cam tells me how he feels about certain things things he like things he don't like but even the things that he don't like are nothing major and there are no red flags I can definitely say that there are no red flags there with none of my children and him because I'm never ignoring anything else and if there is an issue that is going to cause an issue or one of my children to feel a certain way then that shit get cuts at the head it gets cut at the head you know for my daughters to be able to look me in my face and tell me mama I'm so glad that you're no longer supporting a man first of all it hurt my feelings it, it made me feel like I wanted to die but it was the truth. It was my truth. And it's their truth because they saw it. They saw it. You know, you're finally happy. You're finally with someone who, you know, who works and wants something for you, not from you. Kids see it. And there's a difference when you're with someone and they <laughs> value you for who you are, not for what you can give. Oop, sorry y'all. Y'all know how my camera get, hold on, let me sit on back again, let me sit on back again. But there's a difference when you're with someone and they value you for who you are, not for what you have and what you can bring to them. You know, and men lead. They don't supposed to follow. I had no business in that anyway. Some of you guys have no business in that. Why are you with a man and most of you guys that they're from another country, especially Nigeria, you know they are not ashamed to beg for money. Most men with any type of dignity about themselves, they're gonna be embarrassed to ask money for men anyway. They don't care nothing about you or how you feel or how you see them. That's why they're not embarrassed to ask you for money. And then they'll try to make you feel a certain type of way and try to make you feel obligated to do certain things for them. No, don't fall into that bullshit. 
though you are an adult, if you cannot afford your life and to live in Nigeria, Nigeria is a place that I've seen more hustlers than I've seen anyone. If you can't hustle and make a dollar in Nigeria to take care of yourself, what can you do for me here when it costs so much more money to live here? What can you do for me here? Y'all need to be asking yourselves those questions. If they can't hustle and take care of themselves in their home country, what the hell can they do for you here? What can they do for you here? Child, stop ignoring the red flags. Listen to your intuition. It's telling you. Baby, it's telling you because you're doing it to yourself. You're doing it to yourself. Yes, they know what their intentions are. No, you cannot prevent them from having their intentions, but you can cut that shit off with the head and listen to those red flags and not allow yourself to get in that situation. And when they get here and you're already in it, you know the love isn't there. You know the respect isn't there. You are a fool for you remaining there. A fucking fool. A fool. Why would you? Why would you? Let that shit go and go be happy. Let that shit go and go be happy. I fought for years for my happiness back. I fought for years for it back. And I'm going to be happy and I'm going to say what I want to say. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to go where I want to go. And I don't give a damn who has what to say about it. You know? Live for you. People are always going to talk and have so many opinions. But trust me, there are so many people who are battling so many things deeper than what you are. Who knows about your situation. But you're living your truth. They're still walking in a lie. So let people talk. Who gives a fuck? The people who are there and who are talking shit about you and um, behind your back and all that stuff, that's just letting you know who's for you. Anyway, those motherfuckers aren't for you. So fuck them. Fuck them people. I didn't give a damn who I had to cut off to get my peace back. The people who were most important to me, they are here. They have remained here. And they've been solid the whole time. If I ever called them for anything, they were there. And they never talked shit about me to anyone else. You know? And it is what it is. You know when people are fake. When every time they talk to you, they have to send you a private message. I had certain friends that I would write shit on their Facebook walls just to see. Because I knew they weren't going to reply because they couldn't because they were talking so much shit about me. But they were seeing my Facebook friends until I deleted their asses, you know, but they wouldn't reply because they talked too much shit about me, you know, but they'll send me a text message, congratulations on this, happy birthday with this, tell your baby happy birthday with this, but they never would do it publicly, you know, lose those people, lose those people, lose those people, stop ignoring those red flags and take accountability for your Self for the roles you played in it. And once you're able to take accountability for yourself and for the role you played, you will be able to move on with your life. You will be. You know, stop sitting in that hole and being depressed and being afraid to love again and to let someone love you and respect yourself. I mean, Bitch, get up and realize who the fuck you are. I had to realize who the fuck I was. And 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 not trying to be disrespectful, but it's the motherfucking truth. I had to tell myself, you let a motherfucker who had nothing come here and play you. First of all, the motherfucker ain't, ain't even that attractive. He's funny looking. Let's just be real. You let a motherfucker come here and play your whole face. When the shit won't even good. The motherfucker couldn't even make you have an orgasm. You had to do what you had to do after y'all had sex to please yourself. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you playing yourself? What are you getting out of it? You can't even get a good fuck out of it. Like, what are you doing, kid? Like, make it make sense. And I know my camera getting blurred because I'm doing a lot of moving. But I'm like, 
I just had to be honest with myself and let myself know, girl, you have been that bitch all your life. You've been her. Wake the fuck up and realize who you are. And I'm going to say that to you. Wake the fuck up and realize who you are. Girl, you have been her. Stop ignoring shit. Stop settling and go get your shit. Go get what you know you deserve. Dude, if a dude is on hand, you're going through it. Realize you've been him. Stop settling for this nobody. Because at the end of the day, it's you. It's you. You bring every motherfucking thing to the table. There will be no table if it wasn't you. But you're settling and then you make excuses and you let these nobody play with you. You let nobodies play with you. And they're playing in your face. And they're treating you bad. What the fuck? When you bring everything to the table. There will be no table without you. If they have credit cards or credit scores or whatever, whatever they have, they have it because of you, because of your hard work. So what the fuck? What are you doing? What are you doing? You gave them their American dream, their better life. They didn't give you a better life. So stop letting these nobodies play with you and realize who the fuck you are because when you realize who the fuck you are, that's when you gonna walk in and talk it. Stop making these excuses, boo. Because this right here is a no excuse zone from now on. In 2024, we ain't got time for the excuses. Fuck them excuses. Fuck people feelings. Do you. I don't give a damn what do you doing you looks like. But do you. And be happy. That's it. Because baby, I'm going to do me and I'm going to be happy. It is what it is. I've been used to people talking about me. Let them keep talking. But at the end of the day, I'm happy. So that's all that matters. I'm happy. My children are happy. My man is happy. I'm love. My children are love. My man is love. God loves me. I am blessed. I have more than I could have asked for. So it is what it is. And you need to get there. You need to get there. But stop making excuses and acknowledge what you did and fix it and then go get your shit okay fix it and go get your shit so that's this video y'all got any questions comment them down below thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe and share love you guys to life love you guys to pieces don't forget to always pray put god first love on those who love you back and if you're in the midst of your healing journey I need you to journal. I need you to get your ass in some, inside of some type of therapy. I need you to eat healthy. I need you to try your best to get at least eight hours of sleep at night. I need you to do everything you can do to rebuild you. Stop thinking about those motherfuckers. Stop thinking the shit is going to get better. Stop thinking that you're going to rekindle anything. Stop looking for a fucking apology. You're never going to get an apology. They don't give a damn. And if they apologize, they are apollo lying. They're just trying to get something out of you. That's why they're apologizing. You don't need no apology. You don't need no fucking closure. Take care of you. Take care of what's in here. Take care of you first. Especially if you have children. You can't be healthy for your children if you're not healthy for yourself. Get your ass to some therapy. Get about that shit. Get about that slum. Stop making excuses and go get your shit back. Go get it back, girl. I'll see y'all in my next video.